Okay, hi, I'm uh, back with part two of um, knee injury um, knee injury complete tear of the meniscus part two um, my first uh, first video on this was basically to sum it up real quick it was um, how it happened, when it happened, what I was going through, what was going through my mind, um, uh, not knowing what the injury was for a while, contemplating, and I put it off for two or three weeks before I even went to the emergency room, uh, the whole thinking it was going to get better when it really wasn't, and I needed to go see a doctor about it ASAP, and I finally did. Um, if you go and check that video out, you'll see what I'm talking about. That was just basically uh, trying to finding out what occurred, like what happened, what. I knew there was something wrong with my right knee, and I, but I didn't know exactly what. You know, I went from thinking it was maybe ligament to tendon to you name it, hamstring, calf muscle, whatever it was that I thought it was, it wasn't. So until I went to the actually get an MRI done. But anyway, that was part one. And now it's part two is I'm going to explain the actual um, the day of the surgery, what happened in the day of the surgery today, earlier today, <clears throat> and I'm going to give you a rundown on what I went through, um, the this, this second I walked into the, um, surgery center, and it is, um, St. Vincent Surgery, Surgical Center in Erie, Pennsylvania, St. Vincent Surgical Center, Erie, Pennsylvania, and I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll talk about that more too, um, in my video, but, uh, I just wanted to mention that because I'm going to give them a big thumb, thumbs up, um, for sure, for, uh, taking care of my knee for me today. Now, um, it's a, uh, the meniscus, okay? Meniscus is, in my last video, I, I, I wasn't sure exactly what, what the meniscus was I mean I was kind of vaguely had a vague idea but uh, I think I said something along the lines of you only have one meniscus in, in your knee and it, that's false you have two meniscus in each knee you have a, a a medial meniscus and a lateral meniscus meaning outer meniscus this is the outside and an inner meniscus this is the inside this is the medial right here where my hand is, and I'm going to go across my knee, and I'm going to go to the lateral, the outside meniscus. So, um, meniscus is C-shaped, shaped like a C, and it um, provides it provides cushion um, between, um, I'm not, I don't know the name of the bones, I should, but uh, between this bone, right? This major bone here below the knee, and this major bone here above the knee, right? Right? It provides cushion between those two bones. And there's cartilage that that is there on the bone, right? And it's actually a menisca is placed in between the cartilage because I believe the outside of the bone it's covered with cartilage both bones are covered with cartilage and then so the meniscus is placed in between and it provides as a shock absorber for back lack of a better term um, between the cartilage of each bone so you have the bone, cartilage, meniscus, cartilage, bone. If you can follow what I'm saying. Bone, cartilage, meniscus, cartilage again, bone. And you have two meniscus. In, this, in my case, it was my medial, which is um, right here. This is my left hand I'm showing you. Um, basically right here, straight down, this is probably where your meniscus is. 
And what happened in my case, I um, tore it. And when I tore it, it popped. I could actually hear it pop when it happened. And when it popped, it tore and it left part of the meniscus hanging, which in turn prevented me from fully extending my leg and fully bending my leg. It was basically in the way. It was preventing me from full range of motion. So, in a nutshell, it needed to be cut out. <laughs> it needed to be cut out and, you know, worked on. And that's what they did when they did surgery. Um, they cut it out. They uh, took all the frayed areas, I'm sure, and they cut those areas too. And they, it's like what you would do with wood, you know, if you get a piece of raw wood from the, from the, um, from outside, from a tree branch, and you want to sand it down and make it, um, you know, make it nice and fine, make it nice and whole again, nice and round and whole and, you know, smooth. You would just sand it, buffer it, and this is basically what they're doing to your meniscus when they perform this type of surgery. Uh, what I got done today was uh, partial medial meniscectomy. Menis I had a partial medial meniscectomy, and in my case, it was my right knee. But anyway, um, as you walk, as I walked in today, I'm going to lay back now because I'm been sitting up here for a while, but as I walked into the, as I walked into the um, surgery center today, right when I walked in, it was just, um, very good, very great service uh, from the medical assistants to the whoa, office workers, to the nurses, to the whatever, to the doctors, to the whatever title they might have, they may have held in that office. They were just professional and treated me with the utmost respect and um, decency, and they treated me like um, like I was part of their family. You know, and they wanted me to be better, and they and they made me better. So right when I walked in, I what we do. My surgery was scheduled for twelve fifteen. So I was asked to come into the office at eleven o'clock. When you first walk in, you will in in this case anyway in Erie in St. Vincent's, you walk in and you um. You go up to the desk and you give them your name, and then what happens then is they will um, have you state your date of birth and your address. And um, they'll say, please have a seat, we'll give you a call. So it was about maybe 15 minutes and then the lady came up to me very, very nice and had me come into her office. And she just wanted to go over all the information, make sure it was all correct. Make sure that um, I had my, she had a copy of my insurance card and my, uh, my identification. And she had a, you know, my picture along with it, so she knew it was me. She didn't even have to ask me for my ID or my, my medical uh, insurance because she had it right on file there. So that was cool. Even though I had it, you know, I could have showed it to her and I asked her. But she's no, I got a picture of you here. I got all the information in front of me. Uh, you know, what's your date of birth? That whole thing. What's your address? Make sure everything good, good, good to go. She explained to me this is what you're here for today. I want to make that clear. You're here for a um, right knee um, arthroscopy with partial medial meniscectomy. And I was like, "Yep, that's me." She said, "Okay, have a seat." She gave me a uh, she gave me a beeper, a little brown beeper that beeps when they when they when when they're when they're calling you. And um, so when the beeper would beep would go off, you the nurse that means the nurse wants you. They're gonna they're ready to take you back there. So I went back. I sat down for another 20 minutes probably, not even that, maybe 15 minutes. And um, my beeper went off and uh, a nurse came out and said, hey, Robert, we're, we're, uh, we're ready for you. So I went and um, I went back with the nurse and they take you and they take you in a, um, they give you a gown, you have to put a gown on. They give you a bag for all your personal belongings to put inside and it goes underneath the, um, goes underneath the rolling bed. You know, they have the rolling beds at the hospital, the beds that roll around. And um, 
they said we're going to have an anesthesi anesthesiologist come speak with you and we're going to have uh, in the meantime i'm going to put this iv so they got me they got me um hooked up with an iv and the iv went into my went into my uh right here this arm here um Right here is where the IV was at. I don't know if you can see it. Wait, wait, no. <laughs> right here. This is where the IV was put in, right here. So it was like right here. I don't know if you can see that tattoo, but it was right on, right, right there, right where the good vein was at. That's where they put the IV in at. Okay. Um, and um, that was for. They want to pump you with fluids. They want to make sure you got um, good fluids going on, and then, um, um, you know, that eventually, you know, they they give you some medication to to calm you down um, to get you ready for the anesthesia. And um, so, not but like maybe fifteen minutes later, they're rolling me back. The anesthesi anesthesiologist came in and spoke with me. And she went over some questions, some basic questions. They'll ask you about personal stuff, personal, uh, any family members this, any family members that. They'll ask you questions. Okay, they, uh, I'm good to go. And once I was good to go, they, I was, they were rolling me back. As they were rolling me back to surgery, she, she put in some medication in the IV to calm me down. And as soon as she said, you might feel a cold sensation, She's like, Robert, you might feel this cold sensation. As for, she, couldn't, she didn't even finish sensation, and I was out, just like that. As soon as she said sensation, I was out. I didn't remember nothing after that. All I remembered after that was waking up. The nurses were waking me up maybe like an hour later, and um, they were getting me ready for, uh, for discharge, you know. They gave me some food, some pretzels, some chips, and they gave me some uh, some pepsi or coke it was one or the other and i drank it and i had some pretzels and that was fine and they um and well you will you will when you come out of it when you come out of the anesthesia you will feel pain in your knee that whatever knee they operated on you will feel pain i'm not going to sugarcoat that you will feel pain is it excruciating pain no but there's pain there um so they give you pain medication uh, and I went and got a script of that. Um, so, but I'm going to, I personally, I'm just going to take ibuprofen because I'm going to try and stay away from the pain medication, the narcotics. I'm going to stay away from that. Um, that's just a personal preference for me to each his own. So I'm going to try to just live on ibuprofen here for the next few days and see if it, um, if that works. But anyway, um, they, they have the option of pain medication if you want it. And I mean that's about it, man. They they go over your your um, they go over your instructions. You know, basically they want you to do the whole rice thing: rest, ice, compress, and um, elevate your leg. So uh, they want you to do that for like the first 72 hours, and then you'll go and you'll see you'll have a follow-up appointment with your orthopedic surgeon, and he'll uh, redress the wound. He'll redress the the um, the dressing. He'll take the, the dressing off and redress it. And um, yeah, that's what it'll do. And then, and, and, and then, um, and three weeks from now, I'm going to have a uh, my my sutures removed, my stitches removed. So uh, I'm looking at a. Oh, first, let me cut this off. This is going to be. There's going to be a part three, and it's not going to be that long if you can bear with me. But right now, as part two, I'm out. We'll finish with part three.